A dozen doctors delivered speeches in front of the U.S. Supreme Court on Monday to a small crowd, claiming without evidence that the government is hiding the cure for coronavirus. This virus has a cure. It is called hydroxychloroquine. You don't need masks. This video was produced by a group calling themselves America's Frontline Doctors, and this video dropped like a bomb, racking up 14 million views in one day, even getting retweeted by POTUS. COVID-19 is a virus that exists. But who are these doctors, and can they be trusted? We're America's frontline doctors. We're here only to help American patients and the American nation heal. Well, you heard it from them. They just want to help the American people heal, so... That clears that up. Thank you very much for checking this video out. Yeah, there's really probably no reason to look into these people any further, right? I mean, it's just a slick video with a, a huge messaging campaign uh, 96 days before an election. Okay, maybe it would be wise to know a little bit about who exactly is in this America's Frontline Doctors group and what sort of agenda might they have. If you're a good conspiracy theorist, you probably tried to look into the background of this group before you just blindly spread their propaganda, right? No? Well, you may actually get a free pass this time because if you did try to do a background check, you probably ran into some uh, obstacles. The massive amount of web traffic crashed the American Frontline Doctors website, but fortunately I was able to get in before that and grab some stuff. They don't disclose their ownership up front. However, they do provide a list of their leadership, which doesn't contain a single epidemiologist or immunologist or infectious disease expert. Hmm. Oh, nice, but we do have an eye doctor. No, wait, two eye doctors? And a guy whose bio is still displaying the default Latin filler text for web development. Oh, we should probably Google him. Maybe he's an expert in epidemic. Oh, come on, three eye doctors? <sighs> but there are a few general physicians here, like this one, Dr. Stella Emanuel. You heard her talking at the beginning. And I found out that they even did a recent study in the NIH, which is our national institute, um, that is the, the national NIH, what, National Institute of, of Health. Although Dr. Stella Emanuel is a real board certified physician, she certainly has some interesting views about medicine. Yeah, no, they're using all kinds of DNA, even alien DNA, to treat people. Mixing human beings with demons. And right now, demons are being, they are creating containers right now for demons to inhabit. It's just become a terror. All right, that, that's enough of that. Now, I don't think that just because someone's a bit quirky that it means all their opinions should be invalidated, but in general, America Frontline Doctors already lacks credibility as none of the doctors are specialized in infectious diseases. So if we're going to throw away our trust in all the major medical journals about which medications work and what practices are safe, it's probably fair to ask who are we doing that for? And how much credibility do they have? Witchcraft. Cough it out. Burp it out. Yawn it out. Vomit it out. Cough it out. Burp it out. Yawn it out. Vomit it out. One way to the... Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Now, in my last couple videos, I've gotten torched from people saying that my videos about conspiracy theories are just ad hominem attacks. So I'd like to take a brief moment to address the actual claims made by this group. In their unpublished, unpeer-reviewed paper, America's Frontline Doctors says that hydroxychloroquine is indisputably safe. Darn it, there I went with the ad hominems again. Let me try that again. In their paper, America's Frontline Doctors claim that hydroxychloroquine is indisputably safe. After all, it's been FDA approved for, I don't know, 40 plus years. First off, it's important to note that just because a drug or device is FDA approved doesn't mean that the product is guaranteed to be safe. In fact, manufacturers recall about 4,500 different drugs and medical devices annually because they end up being dangerous. But to back up this point that the drug is indisputably safe, the paper first calls upon the authority of a TV interview with... Dr. Oz? I will not do an ad hominem. I will not do an ad hominem. I wonder, but have any of your patients contracted 
COVID-19? I have seen 800 lupus patients unique visits since September 1st, 2019, and not one of them has developed COVID. Now, up to this point, hydroxychloroquine has been used most often in three situations, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and malaria. Certainly you can see why there may be a higher standard for a drug that probably everyone in the world will put in their bodies. Yeah, there have been some tests that seem to show some clinical benefits of using the drug, but there's also been others that show no significant difference, and there have been others that show significant risks. The point is, we just don't know yet. There's a medical system of checks and balances, and skipping it is a bad idea, especially if it's something that, again, will be taken by most people. Yes, the system is slow, but that's how the medical community at large is set up. We have educated, experienced, specialized researchers who publish their findings, submitting them to the harsh scrutiny of all the other autonomous specialists who push, question, discredit, affirm, repeat, evaluate them, and then publish their own findings. The ideas that are based on observable, repeatable science generally win out. Sometimes it takes years and it feels like the medical community is behind, but that thoroughness and massive collaboration is part of what makes the process a stable, reliable one. Now back to the ad hominems. <laughs> Just kidding. Lastly, I want to talk about who exactly is behind this messaging campaign, who's organizing it, and who's funding it. Yes. Yeah, so I'm so glad you guys are preaching this message. You know, South Dakota did something interesting. It's interesting that you're from there. So the governor did not restrict access to hydroxychloroquine. We know. We right. For that. Right. The first time you watched this doctor video, you probably noticed that something didn't seem natural, maybe because it seems strangely highly produced, including painfully obvious planted questions. The hydro or whatever, how you say it, is restricted. How do we get access to that? That's the number one question we're all asked every day. Over 32,000 people commit suicide every year, according to a 2004 study. Is that the last year that data was available? Yes. My head is in such okay, pain! Okay, I think that Michael Scott and Dwight Schrute may have actually done a better job of pulling this setup off. If this news conference doesn't feel natural, that's because it's not. This event was hosted and funded by the Tea Party Patriots, a right-wing political group that is funded by billionaires and organizes mass protests. Sweeping the nation all across the country. Hundreds of these protests across the country in Maine. Conservative conspiracy theorists are very suspicious about the Black Lives Matter rallies and how they might be funded by global elites in a way that's related to the upcoming election. But they don't seem to want to think about how there might also be a conservative counterpart to that. In May, the Associated Press reported that the conservative think tank CNP Action discussed recruiting doctors who were willing to push narratives about reopening the economy before safety benchmarks were met in a May 11 phone call. And the more you look into this group of doctors, the less it looks like a grassroots assembly of friendly local doctors, and the more it looks like an alt-right version of the Avengers each doctor with their own specialty of Tea Party ideology. The barrier to getting our kids back in school is going to be the uh, national unions. That you have to realize that lockdowns, we haven't taken a $21 trillion economy and locked it down. Open businesses. So I would say Facebook and YouTube have taken the most draconian measures to silence and censorship people. I will call them fake science. Any study that says hydroxychloroquine doesn't work is fake science. Dr. Emmanuel, also known as Warrior. 
If an idea is medically sound, you would expect to see a lot of diverse people endorsing it. But when everyone's ideology lines up almost perfectly, you have to suspect whether their opinion is coming from their medical duty to care for their patients, or if it's coming from some other place.